personnel until they break is a plan to demonize our veterans. As Obama's Justice Department has openly said, they believe the number one terror threat in America, and they believe Homeland Security's main mission is dealing with returning veterans. The statistics don't show that. The statistics show, and history shows, the real threat is out of control, tyrannical governments. The type of governments that demonize our veterans. Bottom line, it's an inalienable, basic, God-given right to defend yourself. And it belongs to every man, woman, and child on this planet. Not just to Americans. And not just to the rich elites who want the monopoly of power. Because it was Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in history, who said political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. And that's why they want us disarmed. Now let's go back to David Knight and his live reports here on the Sunday radio transmission. That's right, and we're going to be right back. We're going to have more on this debate. The lieutenant general said he didn't want to have the debate there with Kit Daniels, but we are going to have that debate, and we'll be right back with that and other news. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com a chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. For a limited time, use the promo code WATER15 and get 15% off on all ProPure systems at InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is 
concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Now, we just had a special report from Alex talking about this Fort Hood shooting last week. And the two issues, besides the number of people that were killed, uh, there was four people, I believe, and 16 people, four people killed, 16 people shot, 20 people killed in the space of 10 minutes. And Kit Daniels engaged the lieutenant general, asking him if he thought that it might be better to have soldiers allowed to carry sidearms because 10 minutes is a lot of time especially when people are getting shot at the rate of two per minute and of course he didn't want to have that debate we're going to have that debate it's going to be talked about here it's going to be talked about in congress there are people in congress that are talking about it now alex is going to be joining us in the second hour again this is going to be highlights from his interview this last week with ron paul and uh, he's going to be talking to him about geopolitics. Of course, that's going to include the Ukraine, things that are happening there with the IMF, of course, economic issues, and the future of Rand Paul. A lot of different issues there. One of the best interviews I've heard with Ron Paul. Alex is going to be doing that in the second hour. Now, one of the things that InfoWars reporters Kit Daniels and Jakari Jackson mentioned when they went there, as Alex pointed out, was... The question of whether or not he was on an SSRI drug, and of course he was. He was on Ambien and some antidepressants, as the lieutenant general said. The cocktail of things that have a big effect on people. Now, Ambien has been in the news quite a lot lately. We just had, in February, we had uh, Carrie Kennedy, who is uh, the daughter of Robert Kennedy. I believe the ex-wife of Governor Cuomo. Anyway, very prominent person, very well connected. Uh, she was involved in a hit and run. She was acquitted. Her excuse was... She was on Ambien. She said that from the time she got behind the wheel until she was woken up with a police officer pounding on her car door, she didn't know where she was going. Now, this is something that does happen all the time with Ambien. You get ambulatory, right? Uh, they give it to people who have depression. It makes the depression worse in many cases. It makes them homicidal and suicidal in many cases. If they give it to them for sleep deprivation, sleep problems, it gets worse. They start sleepwalking. And we had a case just here in Austin where we're located. And uh, we had a guy who hit a off-duty fireman. He was riding a bicycle. The guy hit him, hit and run, just kept going. Ambien is very dangerous. That is the common thread. And yet when this happens, we're told that the gun is to be blamed. We're told that law-abiding gun owners are to blame. They should have guns taken away from them. But even more strange than that is the idea that the government will not allow soldiers to have weapons on military bases. That was always the case until the Clinton administration. Now, a lot of people like to point out that that was a policy that was actually started under Bush the first. He actually created that policy. It was actually implemented, however, under Clinton. So you've got Bush the first, you've got Clinton, you've got Bush the second, you've got Obama, Republicans, two Republicans, two Democrats. They all agree now that the military should not have weapons on base. This is the same kind of idiotic thinking that harasses airline pilots with, who are carrying nail clippers because they might become terrorists with those nail clippers. Never mind the fact that they're actually flying the airplane. So when you're gonna give weapons to soldiers, state-of-the-art military weapons like we have, and heavy weapons, but you're not going to allow them to carry sidearms, come on. The military understands the importance of deterrence. Sometimes deterrence can be there because people see that you've got the weapon. Sometimes deterrence is there because they don't know if you've got the weapon. So both open carry and concealed carry are effective deterrence. They prevent crime. They stop crime. But let's talk about what, what's being said 
right now. Of course, on Friday, we had a couple of representatives here in Texas weigh in on this. We had Rep Representative Mike McCall, who is on the Homeland Security Committee. He said, I personally think if you're trained for combat, you ought to be, carry, you ought to be able to carry a weapon. Yes. And, but then he was pushed back by uh, Representative John Carter, who said, well, I think it's kind of like uh, your home. And in my home, I should be able to tell people who has guns and who doesn't. The forts are the homes of the Army, so the Army should be able to tell people who has guns and who doesn't. Well, the problem is, is that they're not doing a very good job of that. And the problem is, is that we know that when people have firearms, you're actually safer, not more dangerous. But it also brings up the question as to, is the Army a servant of the people or is the Army the master? That's a question we need to start having. Because when you have a standing army, and the army has been standing now for 60 years, it's been used for continuous warfare abroad. And as Madison had pointed out to us, a army that, is, that defends us against enemies abroad will eventually become the instruments of tyranny at home. And we see that happening now. We see militarization of the police. We see heavy-duty equipment that is coming down from Fallujah and other places, these massive... Uh, military, th mind sweeping uh, operations, the massive uh, tanks that they're giving to police departments. This is a very concerning thing because it looks like they're trying to militarize the police, and they are. It's not just the equipment that they're giving them, it's the training that they're giving them. As we see when we look at places like New Mexico, where they're teaching them, uh, giving them no hesitation shooting drills, teaching them to shoot first. We've got even police officers at the state academy in New Mexico saying they're going to not teach that because it's dangerous, because it violates everything that they've always done as police. This is being driven from the federal government that wants to militarize the police. But it's also being driven in many other ways. We just had a Supreme Court ruling that didn't get a lot of attention this last week. It was the Castleman case. And it was a ruling basically about domestic violence. They tried to push the Second Amendment issue to the side, but it illustrates the slippery slope that we get on when we start saying that people who are quote unquote insane should not have a firearm, should have their guns taken away from them. In this particular case, it's about domestic violence. Now, we would all agree that somebody who is bona fide insane, somebody who is, has a history of domestic violence, should have their firearms taken away from them. They should be put in prison for that matter. But the deal is, is that what, how do you define that? How do you find what domestic violence is? How do you define what a convicted felon is? You know, people can get a felony just for releasing balloons on the beach in Florida. Look it up. That's the case. Now, in this particular Supreme Court case, the majority concluded that domestic violence encompassed acts that, quote, one might not characterize as violent in a non-domestic context. Hmm. Sounds like they're not really talking about violence. They said the federal law defines a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence as one involving the use of physical force. That's what uh, the defendant argued in this. And he argued that the state law under which he was charged did not require proof of such force. Now, Sotomayor, who wrote for the six justices deciding in uh, the majority, said that domestic violence has to be understood broadly to include seemingly minor acts. And the word violence, standing alone, connotes substantial force, she said. But that's not true when you're talking about domestic violence. Here's how she defines domestic violence. Example she gave in the opinion. Domestic violence could include pushing, grabbing, shoving, hair pulling, or a squeeze of the arm that causes a bruise. Now, writing a dissenting opinion, Justice Scalia said that this is, to redefine violence this way, is an absurdity that it is that is at war with the English language. See, that's the problem. They talk about people being insane, not having guns, having that right withdrawn from them, people who are felons. How do you define somebody that's insane? That's always been the charge against dissonance in places like the Soviet Union. You can lock people up on the accusations of one doctor, not on a jury of their peers. This is a very serious, slippery slope that conservatives, in many cases, are putting us on. We'll be right back with more news. Hillary Clinton lost $6 billion. We're going to have that story coming up. Stay tuned. 
Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support.